welcome to this whirlwind demo of Flex. So let me show you some of the things Flex can do. First off, it can help prep a course. So if we give it a course name, let's say I'm going to say new venture creation. Actually, no, let's do 21st century American American lit. If I have a course description, it will, I can put it in here. Otherwise, I can say, you know what? Just infer the learning objectives from the course names. I can tell it how many weeks the course is, how often we meet. Let's say this is meets regularly. Let's do uh, one time per week for three hours. And then it will draft my course outline for me. And the difference between Flex and something like ChatGPT is that Flex has a structure. It knows what questions to ask you about your course goals. It also knows about your students. So when you first register with Flex, it infers your the school you teach at based on your email address. And then it has a database of information about your students, their demographic background, their socioeconomic status, what percentage of them are first time college students. Uh, and it will automatically adapt the resources it produces for you with that information in mind. And of course, you can always make a change here. So if I don't like the course outline it's created for me, I can make a change. But if we look down here, I can see, so here's our 21st century American Lit. Here's the learning objectives for me. I'm gonna analyze some writing, explore the socioeconomic and cultural contexts, and then a number of other learning objectives, and then a sort of a week by week breakdown of what to cover in each of my classes. Of course, it knows I only have one class per week, so it calls out what to talk about during each of those classes. And then a nice thing about Flex versus ChatGPT is that I can actually download this, uh, this document and I can edit it. It's gonna always ask me for my feedback so it knows whether or not it's doing the right thing. And I'm gonna say, I'm excited, um, thanks. It's going to ask me why I feel excited uh, because I get to show off Flex. And then we and Flex uses that information to continually improve. Okay, so it's going to download that for me. While it does that, I want to show you some of the other features that Flex has. In, in particular, I want to talk about the assessment that it can help with. So we all know that assessment takes a significant amount of time, and we've been looking at ways that AI, in particular Flex, can help reduce the amount of time it takes to do assessment while increasing the quality and decreasing the amount of time students have to wait for that feedback. So here you can see is our assessment module. You can paste in student submissions, and then you can review the rubric that Flex will actually grade your assessments on. So here is a detailed rubric. It looks a lot like the rubric you would find in any classic learning management system that you might give to uh, students via your LMS. So here are the instructions for the assignment. We are asked students to, in their own words, describe the pros and cons of using AI in education. And then we've got a detailed rubric here that will call out what exactly that means. So two accurate pros and uh, two accurate pros explain why those pros are beneficial and the impact of pros on a class. So same thing with the cons. So the great thing here, again, the difference between ChatGPT and Flex is Flex has been optimized for teaching in higher education, whereas opposed to like a ChatGPT is just going to be sort of generic. This is going to give fine grained detailed feedback to students that instructors can use as a starting point. So if I have a response in here, here's some pros, here's some cons. I can tailor the type of feedback that I want to give, whether it be detailed or concise, I can make it shorter. I can have it change the way it, it offers suggestions, either getting explicit about how to make improvements or asking students reflective questions to encourage them to explore deeper. But if I go on here to detail, I'm going to click assess, and then Flex is going to start reading through the rubric and then comparing that to what the student has responded. And it's not only going to give us some feedback, it's also going to take a first stab at some scores. So here, this paper has gotten 65 out of 100. And we can see that, oh, look, the accurate description of two pros got five out of 10 points. So I can scroll down and I can look at the detailed feedback here. And we can see that provided two pros, such as improved learning outcome, did not accurately describe AI skills for job market. So it didn't ac accurately expand on why AI skills would be helpful to students in the job market. Uh, so you can see that this is all kind of the default version of the feedback, but I, as the instructor, have the ability to change this. And I can say, consider adding 
Um, another detail about how AI can help students get better jobs. Now, the great thing about this is I can actually copy this feedback and I can paste it into a learning management system or any other feedback mechanism I want to give to my students. I've also checked the box up here at the top called learn from my edits. So Flex will actually learn how I'm changing my the scores that it gives me so it can tailor its feedback for me going forward. That's another piece of functionality that a generic chat like a generic uh, AI like ChatGPT doesn't have the ability to do. So a lot of cool stuff here in terms of assessment. Um, but let's go back to our conversation here. Here is the downloadable link to the document, uh, my course outline. Now, of course, creating a course outline is just one step. I might want to go through and actually create individual lesson plans for each of these courses. So if I click here to create a, uh, a lesson plan, it's going to ask me, okay, which lesson plan do you want to create? And I'm going to say, oh, go create a lesson plan for the first lesson. So let's start at the very beginning. Flex will start working on that. It knows about the outline it just created for you. And so it's now it's going to go and look that up, understand the learning objectives, and then build out a lesson plan for you. So here we go. Class meeting, three hours, provided an overview of the course and introduced key themes and genres in contemporary American literature, icebreaker activities. It knows to make things experiential and interactive. We're going to give a course overview and then general themes. And again, it knows that we've got a three hour block that we want to fill up and it's going to give us um, outline what we should do in each of those, um, each section of our three hour class. Okay, so I'm going to start this over because uh, I want to show you something else here real quick. Of course, I can download that lesson plan, but I want to jump straight into one of the other pieces of functionality that Flex has. It has the ability to create interactive experiential games. So let's say I wanted to um, introduce students to a subject. I could create a bingo game here where instead of pulling out of numbers out of a, out of a hat that students try and match on a card, it actually pulls out questions and students try and find the answers on their card. And the first student to get five answers in a row gets the bingo and wins. So it's a really fun, interactive way to overview a subject. Blue Cat is a great way to have uh, multiple choice competitive games inside the classroom so you can get the most questions ans uh, answered correctly in the least amount of time. Uh, and then, of course, it can also do, uh, uh, I say, of course, as if it's normal, but it's not normal. It can create a Jeopardy game for you. So it will create a Jeopardy game with six different categories that pertain to your subject matter uh, and then give you questions that you can ask your students with varying difficulties for each of those, um, each of those questions. So uh, in terms of demoing, bingo is actually the easiest for me to demo right here. Um, but you are welcome to play with Jeopardy on your own. Uh, it's a super fun game. Um, okay, so what topic would we like to stage? Well, this time let's do let's do social entrepreneurship. And then it's going to recall information about your students. Remember that I said it knows about my students and it's going to pull that information in. Uh, and here I'm saying I, I teach at Drexel, maybe I'm saying, hey, you know what, um, I actually teach at John Carroll University for this course on social entrepreneurship. And so it's going to update its understanding. Uh, and it's going to say, hey, can you tell me a little bit more about my students at John Carroll? And I'll say they are interested, interested in social justice issues and are, let's call them seniors. Okay, and then I'm going to say continue to next step. And it's going to save that information and then it's going to use that in not only this game, but also future resources that we create. So here it's going to give me an overview of the bingo game. It's got a video that I can watch. So it gives me a, a heads up of how to actually play the bingo game because in the bingo game, the instructor has their own card where they pull out the answers and the students have their own card where they can see the answers uh, and they get to check the different boxes that represent the answers that they have. So I'll show you that here in just a second as soon as Flex gets done creating our bingo game for us. All right, there we go. So I'll open up the bingo game here. We're going to hop into the instructor view. So this is the instructor's view of the game. 
if I go to this tab down here at the bottom where it says bingo, this is what the students will see. They'll get a bingo card that looks like this. I type in my first name and you'll see that it automatically starts populating my card based on my name. And as I modify my name, the card will randomize. The idea is that we wanted to make it so that each student had their own layout of cards and we use their name to ensure that we distribute the, uh, distribute the answers to different squares. Okay, and then the idea is, you know, I can check my free space here and it automatically fills that card for me. So, or fills that square for me. So now what I do as the instructor, I go into my questions. Now the instructor is the only one who sees the questions. The students have their own cards. But if I check this box, I'll start the game and you'll see that it pulls out this question for everyone. It says, uh, it's a trivia type of question. You'll see there's different types of questions, like there's vocab questions, experience questions. This one's a trivia question. It's called a framework for measuring the social, environmental, and economic value generated by an organization's activities. So what your students see is this. They see the question that's been pulled out at the top of their spreadsheet, and then they got their bingo card. And then we filter and we say, hey, these are the five different trivia questions that you can pull from. These are, it's one of these answers. And then as an instructor, you get to lead a conversation with your students and say, hey, so what do we think the answer is? Uh, and then they can, if you want to, you can let them search Google and try and figure out, hey, what do all of these things mean? And then you get to have a discussion and conversation like who thinks it's social return on investment? Who thinks it's unicorn startup or who thinks it's B Corporation? And then, uh, and then you have a discussion about it. And then you have the option whether or not you want to tell students what the correct answer is. You might just say, hey, you know what? Okay, everyone take your best guess. Someone's going to say it's B Corporation. Um, some are going to say it's uh, social return on investment. And, the, and then afterwards, you can recap the game and say, when someone says bingo, if they got them all right, there's still a, it's, a, it's a bit of a sort of a, a climax to figure out like, oh, did they actually get all of the questions right? Did I check all the right boxes? And if they didn't, then you can go back and say, oh, you said B Corporation, but it turns out a framework for measuring the social, environmental, and economic value generated by an organization's activities is the social return on investment. So like I say, it's a really fun way to uh, introduce students to a topic. And this is totally customizable. You just tell Flex the class you're teaching, the course you're teaching, a little bit about your students, and it will modify and build a brand new bingo game for you. So you can use this kind of game in any wide range of classes that might be interesting to you. All right, well, that's a quick overview of the fun functionality currently in Flex. If you have any questions, thoughts, or feedback, please let us know. Cheers. But wait, there's more. I totally forgot. There's an amazing feature inside Flex that we're developing where you know, we've got this assessment piece, which is great for instructors to be able to draft feedback and use that as a starting point. But what if we could take this kind of AI analysis and provide it to students before they submitted their assignments? What if we could create what we're calling it as an engagement loop, a loop that helps students, especially those that in that 10 to 30% of the cohort that like, no matter what you do, they don't necessarily engage in the content. What if we could help sort of shift their perspective on a topic? Most of the time, these students, they, they don't have enough time or enough interest in a subject to put in high quality work. But what if we can make it really easy for them to understand how to modify their work and make it higher quality? It could be a win for us because we're reading higher quality submissions and it's higher quality for them. They get better grades, they get better outcomes, and they're more engaged throughout the course. So let me show you what that looks like. Same question, pros and cons of AI and education, but now we're gonna ask it in a slightly different way. We're gonna ask it using the Flex chat interface. I'm gonna grab here just uh, any submission. I'll grab one. I'll grab one here that's, that's clearly low quality. Uh, like it will improve my students' work, but help them cheat. So and this was written in the perspective of an instructor. What, what, what would an instructor say about AI? Um, in, in helping. So that's why it's referring to my students. Uh, and what you'll see is that the AI will analyze it, but it won't give students like a flood of information about all the things that are wrong with it. Instead, it simply says, this doesn't appear to meet the minimum requirements for this assignment. You didn't provide two pros and two cons. Your submission has not provided the required two pros and two cons for AI, using AI in education. Please include, include one more pro and two cons with explanations for each. Would you like to improve your submission before turning it in? So here we've built in a kind of engagement loop 
that basically says to students without telling them the answer, like, hey, you're not quite cutting it here. If you want to turn in your submission, you can, but the invitation is there for you to make an improvement. And it's so easy. All you need to do is give me one more pro and two cons. So I say yes, and then take another 30 seconds. Maybe I, I flush it out and the student will come up with this answer which has a little more detail. It calls out two pros and two cons. doesn't really expand on them in any real depth, um, but it's a little bit better. And what you'll see is that it says, okay, well, you're still not meeting the, the minimum requirements, but you have provided two pros and two cons. It's giving them feedback, showing them you are improving, you are making progress. Now all you have to do is describe the benefits and drawbacks of those two cons. So they're saying, hey, please elaborate on the reasons behind each pro and uh, con to meet the requirements. So, okay, fine. I'll go and do a little bit more effort. I'll flush this out a little bit more. Uh, and then let's put this one in here. And while it analyzes this one, what I wanna do is I just wanna show you like the difference between what kind of grade students would have gotten before getting this level of feedback so here's the here's the very first version that they would have put in right and just like oh low effort uh, i'm just going to phone it in i'm going to be done with this then move on to my next assignment this one flex would have given a store probably somewhere between zero and yeah 25 so this would have been a definitely a failing grade uh, if we go back to the one that i just submitted just two variations later and we've got this one here let's see what grade they would have get on this one. So moving from a 25 up somewhere. And the idea being that again, for those students who, so we move from 25 to 60. So it's not like a major change. We're not giving students, uh, you know, uh, every student is going to get an A and we're, the AI isn't giving students the answer, but it's just encouraging them to make that one little step to make small in incremental improvements to improve the quality of their work. And you can see that it's now saying that you've met two of the three requirements. You've provided two pros and two cons. You adequately described them. You still haven't described the impact of the two pros and two cons on a specific class. So there's still more room to be done. But even if the student said, you know what, I'm done here, they've already increased their grade more than double what they would have gotten without this kind of engagement loop. And so that's what we're exploring next is how can we use AI to actually help students engage, especially those that tend to not have the time, energy, or interest to want to engage? Can we make it easier for them to kind of take that next step uh, and improve their learning outcomes and keep engaged with the class? All right, let us know if you have any other comments, questions, thoughts, or feedback.